continue the story now. Feeling depressed or even down? Well, it might be time to hit the treadmill. New research by Discovery has found that exercising reduces the chances of depression. And in fact, the data showed good results for women who moderately increase their exercise routines during the week. An additional 30-minute workout or even 5,000 more steps in a day every single week could reduce diagnosed depression by 19%. So let's discuss this now with Discovery Head of Wellness, Dr. Musima Mabunda. Doc, thank you for your time and uh, good morning to you. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound pessimistic or cynical, but I have tried, you know, exercising so that I can cheer myself up. Doc, all I get is sweat, anger because I'm comparing myself to other, you know, advanced athletes or people that are more fit than me in the gym, and then I leave grumpy. But you are saying that actually scientific research shows that I can actually be better. I need to be more patient with myself. Good morning. Good morning to you and good morning to your viewers. Um, I actually like that you started with, with your experience with <laughs> exercise and you specifically mentioned gym. And the reason I like that really to matter is physical activity is broad, right? Yeah. You can almost always find something that resonates with you. And, and the beauty and the power of, of this piece of research is small amounts of exercise are actually helpful. Mm. So, so one shouldn't undermine the activity you do in the day where you're walking to and from places where you're doing housework, where you're doing gardening, in addition to structured exercise. So every bit of movement counts. And it's quite encouraging that you don't need to kill yourself at the gym. I happen to like gym, but I know there are many people who feel like, oh my God, they find gym intimidating. Yeah. So a small amount of exercise, as you said, were beneficial um, in this study. And I appreciate that because you are saying that um, th there's no overnight success or formula when it comes to, you know, exercise in a, in a sense that you shouldn't put pressure on yourself or compare yourself to somebody else's pace. If you start with those 30 minute, uh, you know, exercises, obviously you can build onto it with time, but you can start somewhere. This is to help your mental health at the end of the day. If you start with those walks, those steps, uh, the 30 mm -hmm. minutes, it does count. I completely agree, Dumelo. I completely agree. And one of the things that I like and that we've seen is if you start people where they are, right, and we do this in, in Vitality with Active Rewards Program, you set someone the smallest goal that you know they will achieve. And because we know that as you exercise, as you start to uh, experience those feel-good hormones, you will gradually increase your physical activity. So we have seen that by meeting people where they are and by gradually increasing their goals, you're able to get people to exercise in a way that is not um, that is not intimidating dating. Mm. So definitely in your case, I would recommend that that catch up with your good friend. You can walk in the park. That cannot be intimidating, mm. but that actually counts. And then you will clock your 5,000 steps without being intimidated. But to me, I think um, whilst you're on the topic of, of mental health and depression, uh, I would really just feel like it's important mentioning that exercise does prevent and has been shown that it can prevent onset of new cases of depression. However, it's equally important to screen because mm -hmm. you cannot manage something that you don't know. We, we have seen from our data set um, that we published a white paper last week as well. And it showed that those members within Vitality that completed their mental well-being assessments mm -hmm. were 1.24 times more likely to seek help. And for me, I, I really think that statistic is quite powerful because it says once people know where they stand with regards to their health, and once you communicate with them the ideal next steps of what they need to do with those results, people actually do act. People care about their health. But first, they must know, yes. which is why screening and doing this assessment is important. But even more fascinating, the second um, key takeaway from, from the analysis we did with our data set is that in a score where in, in we stratify our members in terms of green, which is low risk, um, amber is moderate risk, red is high risk, we see that those members that actually need care the most are the ones that go. So those members that have a red score are 3.3 times more likely to actually go seek care. Yeah. So I think it's, for me, I see it as a combination that you cannot fix something you don't know. Do right. your annual screening. If you're not on vitality, you can speak to your GP, speak to your psychologist, and they can assess if you've got symptoms of depression. Because we've seen when people know, people care, and, and they do act. But equally important, if you can prevent it, why not, right? Yeah. Which is why we're here talking about the study.
And, and that was going to be my next question, Doc, to say, you know, uh, 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 in terms of preventative measures that one can take uh, against a depression, uh, how does exercise play a role? I'm just trying to understand what is it about, you know, exercise and moving your body that almost, uh, you know, activates whatever part of your brain or body uh, to take out more of your happy, you know, feelings and emotions as opposed to more of your depressing and depressant and down emotions? That is a very fascinating question, Dumil. On, on Friday, we had a media roundtable with some of the study co-authors. Uh, we're privileged to co-author the study with the leading um, psychiatrist, Prof. Dan Stan from UCT, and another professor um, from Harvard, Prof. Kunin. When we were discussing this with Prof. Stan, actually, he also confirmed that currently it's still unclear the specific ways in which exercise may actually um, uh, produce these effects that we see. However, various um, hypotheses have been posited for example, the one that says when you exercise, you increase blood flow, to, blood flow to your brain and you might alter the structure of the brain. The most common one that people have heard is when you exercise, you release those feel-good hormones. Mm. And then a, a recent article from Harvard also suggests that uh, by yoga, it's emphasis on breath work and mindfulness also might play a part. So, so I think in a nutshell, though scientifically the specific pathway has not ultimately been determined, there's various hypotheses out there. And some, if you exercise regularly, you will most definitely relate to the second um, point that I made, which is when you move, when you exercise, that's if you find the exercise you enjoy, you actually feel good afterwards. And, mm. and many people relate to that. And at the very least, most people go and exercise because they know it will lift their mood in the short term. Yeah, and I can definitely attest to that because I think I, I, I was watching and listening to an interview by Connie Ferguson. I mean, she looks absolutely amazing, but she makes exercise and so cool, she does. right? She she also attested to that, saying yeah. that that's how she has also coped and managed and treated uh, depression uh, as she had been struggling with depression. That for her was a mechanism, and now she's so addicted to it, she can't let go of exercise it because it's, there's just something about it, Doc, as you've mentioned, uh, that does indeed you know, assist you in terms of your mental health. But just last one before I let you go, you mentioned as well that it's important to know uh, as well because you cannot treat something you don't know. How important is it as well to have those conversations? I mean, besides uh, only consulting with your GP, as you have uh, rightfully so mentioned, uh, uh, checking with your medical doctor. How important is it also to speak up, recognize there's a problem, and talk about it? Jumelo, I cannot underscore the importance of speaking about this conversation, especially in a way that is not stigmatizing. Mm. Because by speaking up, you're actually making it, um, uh, you're making people aware that this thing is not as uncommon as it is. Depression and mental illnesses are very common, but by not speaking up, someone might feel like it's isolated to them. So it's important to speak up, to destigmatize, but also as we speak up, like we're having this conversation today, mm -hmm. you're actually educating people that you're not alone. Many people are going through that, but most importantly, you can actually do something about it. You can screen if you're unsure that you have depression, if you're right. not in vitality. I mentioned you're a healthcare professional. You can actually engage in healthy lifestyle behavior, and specifically now we know that if you exercise, if you move, as as little as 5,000 steps a day per week and you increase that to 10,000 steps, you will start to see the positive uh, benefits. So I think there's power in speaking up and sharing stories and just comparing notes and educating people about the importance of exercise and other measures that can protect their health and well-being. Well, Doc, I appreciate this conversation. I appreciate you for joining us. Thank you so much uh, for joining us right here on the South African Morning Discovery Head of Wellness, Dr. Musima Mabunda, joining us this morning.